Hi, I'm Ted Bear. Welcome to my channel. I'll be going over rule number one of 15 important rules that you should establish in your household and integrate into your dog training. It'll just help you have an obedient dog. Family members and regular guests, they'll need to follow some of these rules, but you can teach them. You'll find links to all my videos down in the description section below, including all the rules. While you're looking at those links, make sure you click on the first video. It just goes over the benefits of sharing a particular language with your dog. Many people think that having an obedient dog is beyond their reach. Well, it is within your reach. Everybody can have an obedient dog. You can train your dog not only to be obedient, but terrific. Rule number one of 15. Be consistent. Establish the words you want to use in your dog's language and consistently only use those words. You can't one minute say, Bowser, come, and the next minute yell, get over here. Even with encouragement that you give your dog, you don't want to one minute say, that's my girl, and the next minute say, good dog. Uh, most confusing, are the sit up, sit down, lie down, and lay down commands that I hear people use. In this case, there's two words being used in each command, and the same word down appears in all four commands. Uh, it's kind of two violations there that confuse your dog. Just use a single word command like sit and down, at least in the initial training. Also, you want to be consistent in your training method. You need to make consistent and proper corrections. I don't care if you're watching TV. If you see your dog carrying a sock from your closet, you need to stop and make a correction. If your child is uh, feeding your dog at the table and you have a policy that you don't want your dog begging at the table, well, they're undercutting your training. Often, we praise a dog for the incorrect behavior. When someone walks into your house, whether it be a family member or a friend, if your dog jumps up on them, their natural response is to pet the dog, thus rewarding the dog for doing something objectionable. Another good example is when a dog is barking in the backyard and the owner runs to the back door, not wanting to disturb the neighbors, and offers his dog a silencing chew toy, a dog biscuit, or lets his dog come in. By rewarding the dog for barking, the owner has just made his problem worse. Put some thought into what you are encouraging your dog to do. Let's say you're comforting your dog doing a bad thunderstorm, and you're showing your own anxiety as well. Well, you're just encouraging the wrong behavior. Imagine the next time a thunderstorm goes by and you're not there to comfort your dog. Your dog may be shaking in fear, chewing on furniture, or doing other destructive behaviors just to release some anxiety. Be consistent in how you speak to your dog, the words you use, and the corrections you make. Please give me a thumbs up and watch my other videos. My book, Communicating with Your Dog, is available on Amazon. When it initially came out, it won a Dog Writers Association of America Award. It outlines a simple 20-word language that you can share with your dog. 